Hello?
Good morning. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church in Metuchen. For those of you here and those online, welcome. The last session on Christology is today. Uh, after worship, please join Helen Burr Kukowski and Reverend Gary. Uh, in what room is that in? The library. the library. But get refreshments first before you go there. Sadly, today is Reverend Ashley's last day with us. Please join us in celebrating her two wonderful years here with us uh, in the chapel. We heard that tonight's Christmas dinner and show is sold out. A reminder that besides the dinner and the music, there will be a silent auction that you can participate in. Twelve baskets are up for grabs, and you can win one. Remember to bring spare, spare cash to be a part of the auction fun. Here's an important reminder from our treasurer, Josh. Your 2024 offering envelopes may be picked up from the narthex. The boxes are labeled. Please look for your name. Finally, please read the Sunday paper for all that is happening this month. How does a weary world practice peace? By listening before we speak and saying sorry when we need to. By advocating for justice and caring for our neighbor. By practicing Sabbath and forgiving 70 times seven. By choosing grace over hate and opening the door for each other. There are a million ways to practice peace. So today we light the candle of peace as a reminder and a charge. God's help, may we bring peace into a weary world. Amen. In God's house, we can be joyful. We can be grateful. We can be joyful. In God's house, we can be weary. We can be anxious. We can be grieving. In God's house, we can be honest. No fire or fire, divided or doubtful, connected or curious, and everything in between. This is God's house. You are welcome exactly as you are.
family of faith. One of the ways we find joy in this weary world is through connection. The prayer of confession is a place of connection with God. In the prayer of confession, we get to come to get before God with our full, messy, honest selves. And in the midst of that mess, God tells us that we are loved, claimed, and forgiven. What great joy that is. So join me in the prayer of confession, not because you have to, but because you can. Let us connect with our merciful God. God, we confess that we often doubt good news. We move through this world waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for our life to fall apart, waiting for our humanity to get the best of us. Instead of leaning into joy, we lean into scarcity. We lean into fear. We lean into isolation. Forgive us for forgetting that joy is amplified when shared. Heal the wounds we have from the past hurts and teach us how to throw open our doors to each other. Show us how to find joy in our connection. Amen. The beauty and mystery of God's grace is that no matter what we do, forgiveness is ours if we seek it. We are loved, we are claimed, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Presbyterian women, the PW wanted to share some important information with you. We wanted to begin by thanking you as a congregation for helping to support the events we hold each year, like the rummage sales and the Holly Fair. You and the community have supported our events by your donations of time, donations of goods, and your shopping at these events. Thank you for my necklace. <laughs> this year's events were very successful. You brought in, we brought in more money than ever before. We are so grateful. The work we do can only happen in a church that is engaged and thriving. The volunteer hours in setting up these events and the contributions of stuff and baked goods by all of you has been the secret sauce in these success stories. We want you to know that the money that we raise goes to missions both outside and inside our community. By contributing to a health care mission in Haiti, we are helping some of the poorest people receive medical treatment. We also support widows in Africa to help them establish businesses and support themselves and their families. Locally, we donate to Camp Kitty Keepwell to enable inner city kids to experience nature. We <coughs> offer camperships to Johnsonburg to help defray costs, making it possible for these kids to attend. <coughs> we also support our food pantry. However, sometimes we need to look even closer to find meaningful ways to support our own church community. Each year, Presbyterian Women receives earmarked support dollars from the Investment and Endowment Fund for our mission. However, it became clear in September that the church itself was in need of funds for its operation. As a result, we made a decision to joyfully return our INE funds to the church and designate that they be used to help close budget gaps. We thank you for helping us help others and helping the church. I'd like to leave you with this scripture verse, Luke 6, verse 38. 
says, Give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and it will be put in your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. And we thank you for your support. was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not even a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The clock had struck midnight, the kids were in bed, a single voice could be heard. I'm so bored. It said. The voice came not from a girl, not from a boy, not from a person, it came from a toy. One by one, all the toys stood and moved into a line just as fast as they could. Tomorrow we find out which toy is the best, which gift is favorite above all the rest. I am the knight. I know I'm the best. I am brave. I am shiny and great on a quest. I am a, the bear. I know it is me. I am soft. I am fuzzy and cuddly, you see. Dolls are favorite. None of you stand a chance. We are sweet, we are bright, and we can dance. The toys started to fight as they could not agree which one the most favorite present would be. They fought for so long, they just didn't see an angel appeared up high on the tree. Excuse me, but none of you are the best present at all. Have you heard of Jesus? He was just a baby the first Christmas day, born in Bethlehem in the manger of hay. He was the first Christmas gift, the best ever there was. Cross him and heal from heaven because he loves us so much each day that we live. What greater gift could anyone give? I understand what you said. Yes, maybe you're right. The best gift was given to the whole world that night. Your toys are so great, so the children can play. But Jesus is the best present on Christmas Day. One by one, they returned to the tree, still excited for what tomorrow would be. Now that they knew, the best gift of all comes from heaven above and not from them all. Now let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for your love and for the gifts of Jesus. Let us turn to you for wisdom and for patience. Help us to accept your peace and share it with others. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has sowed her tongue, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, 
and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constantity is like a flower of a field. The grass rivers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass, the grass rivers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This, this is, is the, the word, word of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Mark, 
chapter 13, verses 24 through 27, and then verses 32 through 37. <clears throat> but in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the, on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This, this is, is the, the word, word of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Please pray with me. God of the ages, be with us this morning as you have been with your people always. May we find comfort in your presence and stirring in these words for us. Amen. I remember pretty clearly the night of December 31st, 1999. All 30-some of my family members had gathered to watch the ball drop at midnight to start the new millennium. The air was ripe with anticipation, not because we were all ready for the new year, but because we couldn't wait to see what would happen. Was the world going to collapse before our very eyes? I remember the news headlines talking about whether or not our power would last, what would happen to all the electronics. There was some speculation that things in our own homes would stop working. Pack up your stand mixer and separate the beaters for, from the machine in case it turns on and off by itself. Beyond our own homes, there was even talk about the government shutting down and food supply running short. It wasn't clear what was going to happen, and waiting was hard. So the question was, what are we going to do while we're waiting? Everyone did what they could to prepare. I can still visualize a clip I saw on television of a family bulking up on canned goods for their basement, just in case Y2K caused a catastrophe the likes of which we had never seen before. Families were covering their heads in aluminum foil hats. <laughs> People started talking about the Mayan calendar and the sun's rotation patterns and all of the things that could possibly align to make January 1st, 2000, <coughs> the end of the world as we knew it. My family was definitely in on this to some degree. Maybe yours was too. If you're younger, you may have seen similar images during the pandemic. At the end of 1999, I can't remember who gathered the canned goods and who brought the extra generator, but I do remember we sought comfort in each other that night because in the end, we didn't know what would happen. I sat with my cousins on the carpet, crisscross applesauce, with my chin tucked into my hands while the stuffed mushrooms were being passed around the room, my eyes glued to the television screen, thinking, could we be on the brink of apocalypse? Apocalyptic thinking is a very, very old tradition and a very Advent tradition. It's old in that it has been passed down to us from Jewish apocalyptic literature, which had already been working for several centuries leading up to the time of Jesus in the first century. 
we might recognize apocalyptic texts in the passages where the moon turns to blood, mountains crumble, mutant locusts swarm. These are just some of the strange images we find in parts of the Bible called apocalyptic. Apocalyptic literature tends to be highly symbolic. It's ripe for reading all kinds of things into it, like predictions about the end of the world. And all of those passages have likely led us to vision apocalypse as something to fear. But in its translation, apocalypse really means revelation and uncovering. The Greek term apokalypsi literally means to pull the lid off something. It's a word for a time of change. And so when we read texts called apocalyptic texts, we will find anticipation, fear, yearning, longing, expectation, and newness. Apocalyptic texts are words of God meant to be a balm saying, see what you've been through, and your people are still here. And saying, prepare yourself, for change is near, and you should be looking for the signs of my presence with you. Else you might find yourself thinking the change is nothing but impending disaster. And in that way, it's a very Advent tradition too. In the Reformed, Tradition, we start the season of Advent with apocalyptic texts, like the one read today in Mark 13. I believe as a way to ground us in the feelings of those living during the time Mary was pregnant. Because while the birth of Jesus brought forth such promise and hope, the story starts in a scary time of deep unrest and unsureness a time of anticipation, fear, yearning, and longing for freedom and liberation from the oppressive rule they were under. How would that come about? People did not know exactly, but they were waiting for change. Waiting is hard. And it raises the question, what are we to do while we're waiting? I'm sure some of the people were doing the equivalent of panic purchasing, preparing for disaster, clinging to their temptations like a lot of us were on December 31st, 1999. To those written about in Mark's gospel, Jesus does have an answer to this question. He says, while you are waiting, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Keep awake. Stay alert to all around you and listen for what God is up to. Keep awake isn't a request to ready ourselves for the worst. It's a reminder from the apocalyptic texts to keep ourselves open to the signs of God around us and to let those signs be a balm for us. In moments where we are faced with the unknown, it can be challenging to heed that reminder because the energy from change and uncertainty is uncomfortable. When I first arrived here in Metuchen, I felt some of that same energy. We were stepping into a moment of uncertainty. How is this gonna go? What would we find together? What would be waiting for us on the other side? You, we're on the cusp of the way of the church as you knew it, ending. And I remember my first Sunday here, anticipating that we would be spending our time together, encountering each other's prayers as we embarked on that journey together. And indeed, we have spent the last two years and four months encountering each other's prayers in a time of change. And like the texts passed down to us, we have found ourselves on the other side, changed with our people still here. This time has certainly changed me. It has been my gift and my privilege to be your interim associate pastor. 
you have welcomed me into some of the most holy, sacred, and vulnerable places of your lives. You have confessed, you have grieved, and you have revealed your joys to me, and I do not take that lightly. I am grateful for the time spent sharing over meals, in coffee shops, in a 13-passenger van, on the floor of an airport with some of you, on the streets of Metuchen, in the office, in the sanctuary, in the parking lot. As I prepare to say goodbye to you, there are many things I'm going to carry with me, like hanging out with the youth every Wednesday night and watching them shine in their passion and in their resiliency and in their contagious curiosity, and watching the youth leaders, Wally, Christine, Jackson, Caitlin, Jen, Grace, and Tom, give their whole selves to supporting our young people. Watching the staff navigate every day and every issue with joy and leaning on laughter in times that needed it. I actually can't think of a single day in the church office that passed without some laughter. My Tuesday morning chats with Reverend Gary, there's usually a good 20 to 30 minutes or so before the conversation descended into our various nerdy things. It's been a pleasure to work in true partnership, and I want you all to know how rare that is. I'm going to miss sitting in with the deacons as they care and create opportunities for deeper relationships and offer their time and talents with generosity and holding space with the elders of this congregation as they so intentionally lead, slow to judgment and quick to help. And being in this sanctuary with all of you for moments of contemplation, reflection, lament, and celebration. This community has been through what any congregation would call the most challenging years of a church's life. And in that upheaval, in that time of fear, anxiety, yearning, longing, expectation, in a time of deep change, you held each other up in love and patience and compassion. You have shown your faith in each other and in God, and with that, you have persisted through and risen above. You've taken a posture of caring, asked meaningful questions when you weren't sure what was next, accepted invitations into each other's lives, extended kindness to others and to me, chosen to be on this road together. You shifted, you opened yourself up to the change, you clung to the promise that hope would be on the other side. When you could have been stacking the canned goods in a cellar, counting down the days and crafting aluminum hats. You chose to keep awake, to stay alert to what was happening around you, and in turn, open yourselves to the work of God. And in it all, remembered that the ministry of this church is God's alone. In this season, your faithfulness has been a witness to God's call for the moments of revelation and uncovering. You have been a balm for each other, a sign of God's presence in a time of change, and a living witness to the words of God passed down. And no matter what happens next, whatever it is, I believe this faith of yours will make you well. And I give thanks for that and the way it has blessed my life and my time here with you. We have moved through hardship together, created things together, traveled together, said goodbye to some wonderful human beings together. And I trust that it has all made a difference. And I pray that as you continue to do things together, you know what a difference that makes. And in every moment of anticipation, keep awake for the signs of God around you, knowing that in it all, God is near. Amen.
Like Jesus, who refused to abandon any neighbor in need, we hope to commit to one another with such fierce loyalty. Remember, We remember that what we have is meant to be shared. Let us be generous in heart and trust God's blessing upon our offerings. We invite the ushers to come forward to receive the offering.
Let us pray. God, you know what ails our hearts, our minds, our bodies. You know because you came to earth in human flesh and your spirit companions us in all things. For this gift and all your acts of compassion, we are grateful. May our gifts and offerings be acts of living prayer, an effort towards the compassionate community of which we dream, where all beings everywhere are happy and free. Amen. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Before we have the prayers of the people, I'm going to invite uh, Brian Smith to come forward and Reverend Bear. I'm going to—I have about uh, ten minutes of a roast here that I'm going to read through. Uh, no, I'm going to be very, very brief, uh, and then uh, Brian has prepared uh, short remarks, and then we'll have a prayer for you. Okay, so. I was talking with my daughter, and uh, it, was, it was a dark day in my office, I gotta tell ya. And uh, she said, oh, I know somebody, and she's really cool. She's trying to discern where she's gonna go next in her ministry. So I got a number, and I called Reverend Bear. I said, I uh, hear you're trying to discern where you're gonna go. What if we discern together? And we have. Every week, we ask the question, so, how is your discerning going? <laughs> what are you discerning? And it was a great, great gift to me. Um, so, I have three things that I want to say. Um, one, you stepped into a moment that required grace and courage. And you exceeded all expectations. The next is that you didn't try to fix anybody, and that is a powerful gift that you possess. You invited us to take a posture of prayer. Well done. The, the last one is, and, and this is for today, this is like your last gift. Um, you gave us the opportunity to rejoice with you as you take a step in your life. That's an amazing thing to be able to give. So on behalf of the staff and the elders and the members and the deacons, thank you from the bottom of my heart. much else to say. Um, thanks, Fred. Um, really, just again, just thank you. Um, you came at a time that um, the church was really needed you, right? We needed something, but as it turned out, we really needed you. And you really came in and, and made, um, you know, asked us to really look in, into ourselves and make some decisions. And you really helped us do that. And we really appreciate you for that. Uh, and really just on behalf of the staff, uh, the personnel commission, the session, again, we just say thank you. Um, after worship, we invite you all to come and say farewell to Reverend Bear. We have um, what they like to call K-1. 
taking a shake back in <laughs> the chapel. So please join us for that. And then we'll have some, some other things to, to say and uh, to wish you the best. Because someone else out in this world is going to get someone really, really special in a few weeks. And we're, we're happy for them as much as we have been happy for us. So thank, thank you again so much. Thank you. Please pray with me. Almighty and gracious God, Ashley is your child. And you have filled her with grace and courage, humility and love. And you've let her to find paths where she can offer that again and again and again. Continue to bless and keep her, guide her, so that the gifts that you've given will continue to come through her hands, through her words. We give you thanks for her, her humility and her courage, for in her we saw your son. We give you thanks for her laughter and her joy, for in this we found your Holy Spirit. And we give you thanks for the strength and the determination that she brought to ministry with us. For in that we see your will, that you seek to bless us as a congregation. Thank you for the blessing that you gave in Reverend Bear. Let that blessing continue. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, let's continue with our prayer. Please join me with the prayer for a moment of prayer. Great and almighty God, we give you thanks for the day, for making us a congregation, for gathering us in worship, in song, in prayer, in silence. We pray for the, today for those who are not yet with us. We look ahead to those who have not yet come. We pray that we would not only welcome the stranger but we would embrace them. We pray today for those who are just beginning. We pray for our children, our grandchildren, for those whose lives are filled with wonder. Let us be a place where wonder and awe is welcomed and embraced. We pray today for those who are struggling, for those whose bodies are breaking, for those whose spirits are are broken. We pray that we would be a place of healing. Help us today to continue to offer your grace and mercy to one another. Help us to find the courage to speak words of confession and to offer words of pardon. Help us to listen with a priest's ear and help us to find a prophet's voice. We pray today for those who mourn. We pray for, for Nikki and we pray for Dawn. And we ask that you would strengthen them in a time of loss. We pray today for our community, our nation, our world. Help us as a church to be peacemakers on earth. Help us to care for your creation so that we offer it to the next generation in beauty, in hope, and love. We lift up this prayer in the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let us not fall to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, thank you so much for the warm embrace of welcome you have offered me these past two years and that I know you will offer all who come into space with you. I pray that the balm that you, all for e that you are for each other and for this community only deepens and multiplies for years and years and years and years to come. And God be with you till we meet again. To this end, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you this day and the next and bid you peace now and always. Amen. Amen.